Good morning. I am all alone and I am out running errands and I just thought that I would answer a few questions as I run my errands here today. So I put a call out on Instagram for questions and I'm going to look right now. Okay, so I just looked here and the very first question that I got is sort of a comment slash slash question. Um, Sherry is asking about the community uh, channel and more specifically, it's actually called the Community Tab, and that is over on YouTube. So if you are on a laptop and you are on like my home page to my channel, you will see that it will say Home Videos, I think something else, and then Community. And you tap on Community there, and um, that will just take you to my Community Posts, where I usually post a picture, and then it's usually a spot where I just type some kind of little bit of information uh, to you all and then you have a spot where you can actually leave comments and I can reply back to those comments. Um, so that's what the community tab is. I hope that that helps you Sherry. I hope you're able to find that. You also can find it on your phone if you are on the home page there. You can also just go over to the community tab across the top and find, um, find it there as well. First stop here um, is the library. This is just a little small town library. We go to a couple libraries actually. And so I just have a bunch of stuff to return here. And I'm kind of thinking that some of it might be overdue, which is gonna be a bummer. Um, and I have a couple things at home that I'm still keeping. So I'm just gonna see if they can renew those. Instagram handles are a little bit hard to uh, decipher sometimes, but this one is from Kay Tiag. I'm not sure if that's how she wants it to be said, but um, the question is, how do you handle screen screens with your kids of different ages? And so, boy, that is such a big question. So in our household, let me just see if I can get all this straight. Our three youngest do not have any kind of screens. They don't have any iPods, they don't have a Kindle, they don't have Amazon Fire. I mean, just nothing, okay? We don't we don't have any iPads or anything like that. And so for the three littlest, screen time is really not a big issue because I can pretty much control it completely. Uh, Joseph does like to uh, turn the TV on pretty much all the time and so I'll just go behind and unplug it and just keep reminding that no nope, we only need to watch TV after three o'clock like on school days our general rule is <laughs> no TV until three um, but and then for you know the kids the younger kids will use my laptop for Amazon Prime every once in a while this last summer they were doing it we haven't really done it at all this whole school year but sometimes we will you know I will find like a little video or something like that on um, on Amazon Prime or also YouTube for them to watch but again it might just be like one 30 minute video a day so the screen time for the little kids is just not an issue because we just simply don't have the devices for them to use. And so with the teenagers, it's just a different story. They, I am, I feel like I'm constantly reminding them to get off the screen, do something with their life. They're great kids and they do do lots and lots of things that doesn't involve screens. But let's face it, screens are easy. Um, you can snowboard and ride horses and work out and cook and clean and do crafts all just by watching, right? And you almost feel like you were doing it, but you weren't really doing it. And I think it's how it is for all of us. And so although I think that YouTube and other games and things like that have a place, um, we really, really just try to be conscien conscious of um, encouraging them to just get off the screens. And we do have one bonus at our house, and that is that our uh, internet service is a hotspot. It's an AT&T hotspot, horrible connection a lot of times. And so if they're really, really um, using a lot, and you know, I've been reminding and reminding, and they're not really getting their jobs done or something like that, I simply can just turn it off and put it in my pocket, and that's that. So uh, we do have that added 
um, benefit. So I just use all the tools I think that are available to me as a mom. I turn the internet off if I need to. Um, I will take devices away if they're um, maybe possibly being sassy or not getting their jobs done. Um, you know, but I'm, I'm constantly reminding, so don't think that it happens perfectly all the time by any means. It's just, I think we just have to be diligent in it and, um, yeah, just keep reminding and uh, keep encouraging, you know, other other activities. So that that is a hard one. I know that it's a struggle for all of us moms. I know it is. Okay, we're at the post office. Going to go check the P.O. box and then ship something back that I have to exchange. Christmas present, let's see. All right, looks like there's some cards in there. That's going to be exciting. I love it. Thank you guys all for sending us such beautiful cards. We've gotten some really great pictures, and um, it's just been really a joy and really exciting, I think, for the kids, too, to see that there's, like, people that uh, care about us that we don't technically even know. So thanks. So I know that some YouTubers have been reading their Christmas cards, and I'm not really sure. I just don't feel overly comfortable with that. But I am going to tell you guys that today I got cards from Luxembourg, Wisconsin. So just a few hours from where I am. I got a card from Batavia, Ohio. Totally, totally awesome. Another one from Eagle Pass, Texas. And it's so great because so many of these people comment and I see kind of like little bits of their names come through in their um, either their Instagram or YouTube handle. And so it's kind of it's so neat to see where everybody is from. And then also from Owensboro, Kentucky. And the last card came from Indianapolis, Indiana. So thank you all so much. I'm sure you guys know who you are uh, that sent us the Christmas cards. They're beautiful. The pictures of your families, um, they're just phenomenal. Just so great to see everybody and, um, you know, just start to connect the dots between uh, this whole community here. All right, so I need to get moving. We need to get on to the next stop. All right, so next question is from ah, Linda Smiles. And she says, how was your Christmas? So I have to say that our Christmas was absolutely fabulous this year. We don't really have any major funny stories or any disasters that really came out of this year's Christmas. Uh, so with that, I'm just going to share an event from last Christmas. So we ended up having a fire in the microwave last year on Christmas Eve because some of my um, kids who I guess I thought knew better ended up putting a paper plate that had kind of like some foil um, fanciness on it. They put it in the microwave and it started a fire. So I pretty much just blew up <laughs> and hollered at them and uh, basically insulted them quite heavily. It was not one of my better moments. <laughs> we do actually kind of chuckle about it now. They like to remind me of that. And this year, Warren brought out the fire extinguisher and set it on the island just in case. So yeah, this year was a good year. We, um, I did get these earrings here that I'm wearing. Warren got me these earrings for Christmas, which I absolutely love. I love pearls and I just love all the different colored ones too. And the kids uh, got me a wedding picture from Emily and Sparky's wedding, which that is awesome. It is enormous. And so it, um, yeah, that's, it's great. I am, I have some plans. I want to like do something else with the photo on the wall because uh, just to try to make the whole wall look pretty. The wall's been looking a little rough for a while. So um, so that was really fantastic. And um, it was just it was just overall a good Christmas. Um, pretty relaxing and just a good time. Okay, I'm at the bank. I'm gonna run in, do some banking, obviously, and then we'll be off to the next stop. So I was just driving by the cheese factory and it was completely packed. I mean, this parking lot is so full and I thought all these people can't be wrong. So I pulled in and got myself some warm cheese curds. They are so good. Oh my gosh. Mmm, squeaky. Mm -hmm. Just dropped off another pile of books at the second library and um, okay, just had to check my teeth quick because I've been eating uh, cheese curds. <laughs> okay, so I have a ne next question here. This says it's from Mrs. Kelly. And she says, can you talk about being a mom of littles? I have two under two, open to life, but scared, ha ha. I'm gonna turn. Okay, just turn the van off. I think you'll get better sound quality that way. Um, speak to being the mom of littles. 
I don't even know if this is quite long enough, but I guess what I would say is that um, if you're tired and if you feel overwhelmed <laughs> and if you feel like you don't have enough time for yourself, for your husband, for your kids, for your home, um, you're doing it right <laughs> because that is just how it is. I, when you have little kids, they just require a lot of care and a lot of attention. And something just kind of always has to go. And so I know I had read someplace once in a book or something, they were talking about um, like setting goals. And according to this author, I wish I could remember the title of the book, but according to the author, um, they said that you really can only do three things at a time well. And so if you're trying to um, like eat right to lose weight, or you're trying to work out to uh, build muscle, if you're trying to raise your children using a particular method of parenting, say the attachment uh, parenting style, or I, I don't know, there's just so many different ones out there. If you're trying to keep a well um, cleaned and uh, decorated home, if you're trying to uh, start a YouTube channel, if you're trying to work full time, if you're trying, if you're trying, you know, to do all of these things and you start listing off all the things that require a significant amount of time in your life and energy and you go, whoa, I have like 10 or 12 things on my list. Something is going to have to give and it's not going to go, you know, it's just not going to go real well. And so if you, when you have little, little kids, I think you just really have to remind yourself daily that as long as they are fed and generally happy and content that you're doing a good job because it's just they require a lot of work. And I do think that parenting is one of those things where practice makes you better. I'm not gonna say perfect because I don't think any of us are really perfect parents, but practice makes you better. And so the more you practice parenting and every time you add a baby into the mix, you just have that much more uh, experience. You know, that first baby, it's your very, very first time parenting either a girl or a boy. And then you bring another baby into the family and it could be the opposite sex from the first baby. So now you're back to the first time parenting either a girl or a boy. If you happen to have uh, the same gender the second time, you're just a little bit better at it because um, you have some knowledge about, you know, you, you're just a little bit better at it because you have practice. And so by the time you add that third baby into the mix, again, you've done all these things. You've done two times already. There's gonna be new things that are gonna pop up, but some of the basics of feeding and diapering and um, bathing and bedtime and nap time and learning how to work around uh, a baby's schedule, you already have, um, you already have experience doing that and, and practice. And so every time you just add, you get a little bit better and a little bit better and you find new ways to do things and uh, you just start to get even more creative than when you'd had your first baby. So I, you know, I think it's scary all the time to add another baby into the family just because you're like, oh my gosh, what if this baby doesn't want to sleep through the night and my first two were good sleepers? How am I going to handle that? You know what? You will figure it out. <laughs> and so... Um, that really is all I can, I guess, that's how I would address this topic, is that to just remember that practice always makes you better. The next question is from April, and she asks, what is, let me just make sure I, yes. What's your favorite thing about Warren? So, wow, that is a big question. And I'm not sure if I can limit it to one thing, but there are a lot of things that I absolutely love about him. One, he is an extremely hard worker. <laughs> He always is willing to put in the time and the effort to get whatever job or project done that he has to do. Um, and so that that's definitely one of my favorite, favorite things about him. He also um, always puts his family first. <laughs> you ask the kids every single year for his birthday, you know, somehow the topic will come up at his birthday, what the best gift is. And 
<laughs> you ask the kids and they'll be like, oh, dad always says, you guys are my greatest gift, you know, and they almost sort of mock it a little bit because they just know that's what he's going to say. But that is really awesome about him is that he really, really loves his family and puts us first, I think, just about all the time. And I also love that he's a faithful man. Oh, and another favorite thing of mine, too, is that we just like to have fun together. Okay, so this is not on my list, but I'm going to stop into this really, really cool store that we have here in town. It's called Rustic Redefined, and they do have an Instagram uh, account, and you can see all the uh, clothing options and everything they have. Super, super cool store. So I'm going to head in there right now and uh, see if they have any kind of like after Christmas specials or just see what they have because super super cool stuff they have a really super cool line of like baby and toddler little kid clothes here too I mean look at this little dress oh my gosh oh my goodness oh super cute pajamas Bears, how cute. Oh my gosh. These little hands. Oh, that is so soft. That is adorable too. Oh my goodness. Okay, I have no need to buy any of this stuff. Well, that's cute. Okay, so I'm in Walmart now, and um, let's see, today is actually December 27th, and the thing about shopping, I've noticed like at Walmart after Christmas, is a whole lot of really weird things are on clearance. So I found um, shaving cream on clearance, and razors on clearance, and just, yeah, there's a lot of clearance stuff right now. So kind of a good time to just take a walk around the store and see what kinds of things I need to stock up on. This I'm doing for me. <laughs> My washcloths in the kitchen are so horrible, and I don't know why. I mean, I think this is five dollars right about there. I don't know why it takes me so long to buy new washcloths, but it is time. So that I'm doing for me. Now we're just gonna get toothpaste because we need to stock up on that too after all the Christmas candy. Yeah. I am out of Walmart now. And um, it was pretty busy in there even <laughs> today. Uh, I did have to, <clears throat> I am not going to do a full haul video for our household stuff when I get home. So I'm just going to give you guys a quick little rundown right here in the parking lot. So we did need salt for our water softener. So we got four bags. That's 120, no, that is 160 pounds of salt and it was super nice because there was a Walmart employee he was one of the cart guys and he's like hey ma'am I can take the last bag off the cart for you I was like you bet thank you so that was great because you know when you're trying to pull these off the cart it's like the cart just wants to keep moving so you try to pull this and then the cart pulls towards you and pretty soon you're out in the middle I don't know maybe it's just my problem but Okay, so I did get binders. Warren is getting everything set up for home organization for this year. He uses binders for the business and for, um, yeah, just all kinds of things. So every year, that's what we do right after Christmas is stock up on the binders he's gonna need. And then we did run out of Band-Aids here this month and packing tape I needed, of course, after Christmas. I did find this pure silk uh, for $1.50 a can. So I picked up uh, three of those. Warren needed some more shaving cream, so I picked him up one. Found some razors on clearance, so I got Amber and myself some of those. What else is in there? That's it. I did buy myself, I mentioned this in the store, but I did buy myself some washcloths, and they were only like $3.88. I thought they were five. They rang up at $3.88. We needed some feminine hygiene products down there, and then it was time for a little bit of um, gel. So I know uh, all the boys use gel. So I picked up a big tube of that. We needed to stock up on toothpaste, so I got two kids' toothpastes, two regular toothpastes here. I know that most of my family loves the Scope toothpaste, and then I got a sensitive toothpaste for myself. Now this was a Christmas clearance item. I did walk through there because I was hoping to find wrapping paper and I guess Walmart planned it out just right this year because there was like no wrapping paper except for a couple open rolls and I wasn't about to get those. But I did see these little clear um, 
they call these mini lights and sometimes there's just some things that I want to use those on like throughout the year so I got those for I think it was a dollar 74 or something okay we were on our last bar of bar soap so this time I went with safeguard it just I don't know it just caught my eye so I did that um, we needed some of this ant roach and spider killer and then we just like to keep that on hand in case you know something comes up <laughs> and then some stridex um, acne wipes I ran out in the one bathroom of the disinfecting wipes so I picked up another one of those and then a box of dryer sheets I still have probably 30 left but I thought I better pick them up otherwise otherwise I'll end up spending the household budget before the end of the month and then when the end of the month comes I'll need dryer sheets and I won't have it in the budget so I like to do that stock up even if I don't need the item because then it just kind of like protects that budget and makes sure that we always have the things that we need we are on our last roll of paper towels so I've been getting these sparkle and they seem to work well for us and then two of these are those 12 packs yes two 12 packs of the Charmin Strong that's just been a staple for quite a while in our house and then I did get some Christmas stuff since I didn't couldn't find any um, paper I did get a bunch of these boxes let's see so I found some of these square boxes and then I really liked these whoops I really liked these they were like small boxes but they were deep the ones that I had gotten at Dollar Tree were only about an inch deep and there wasn't a whole lot that we could actually box up in those this year so we have a bunch of them left but these are actually two inches deep so you can actually put something in I did get a few Christmas books here and then uh, some more boxes a little bit of tissue paper I did get four packs these were 48 cents a, a pack for some Santa plates I will pack all of that stuff away and bring it out next year. Um, yeah, so that is everything that I got at Walmart here. I'm gonna hop back in the van, check my Instagram, see if you guys left me any more questions that I should answer before going home. Okay, so I just checked Instagram here. <clears throat> Did I just say Instagram? Hmm. I just checked Instagram and I have one more question here and this comes from Holler Mommy and she asks for tips for a new YouTuber. So um, without kind of digging in to see um, if you already have a channel or where you might be at, I guess what I would say to new YouTubers would be this. Um, first, you just got to get up those first hundred videos and I know that sounds like a ton of videos and it really can take quite some time but you really need to get those first hundred videos up because like I talked about with parenting before practice makes better and so the more and more practice you get at um, filming and editing and making thumbnails and writing good titles and all of that the better you're gonna be at it of course so second of all it's just important to figure out what is the value that you're offering to your audience or to people coming to view your your uh, videos is it entertainment are you offering um, recipes are you offering encouragement in uh, you know some particular area um, are you offering expertise in a particular uh, topic are you you know so you kind of have to um, figure out what that value is that you're offering and then just be sure to continue to make videos that always offer that value so my third tip for new youtubers would be to again try to make videos that are based on what your viewers are coming to you for so I like to every now and then go into my video section and um, then um, sort it by my most popular video and you can just look at like the top 10 popular videos and then start making um, videos like that so um, if for example your top video is a review on a particular product then try to find a similar product or um, or approach that particular review product from a new angle maybe you've used the product and you know for a longer period of time and now you have something more to add to it and so definitely look at what it is that they respond to
what got the most comments, what got the most likes, what video has the most views, and then work at making more videos like that. And it doesn't, you know, I'm not, you don't want to pigeonhole yourself into only making one style of video, but every time you make a new video on a, new, on a similar topic to before, you add a little bit more to it because you've grown in since the last time you did that video. You've learned something new since the last time you approached that subject. So you just are kind of always adding uh, a fresh voice to maybe an old subject. So that would be probably my best advice. Uh, and then of course, just keep going just just don't stop and I would recommend that um, you watch video influencers and video creators I believe that's Tim Schmoyer's channel is called video creators and then um, is it Travis and Benji no 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 who is it? Shoot, I think it's Sean and Benji. Uh, they have video influencers. And so definitely just watch those channels. They have a lot of great tips in there. And what I like to do is when I watch one of their channels um, or when I watch one of their new videos is I try not to um, pay attention to every single thing that they talk about in one video, but I just pick one thing and then I go and I just start working on that one thing. So maybe it's making better thumbnails, um, and you know, I start trying to get better lighting on my thumbnails or better word usage on my thumbnails. Keep on going and um, just always trying to be better. That's really kind of the goal, I think, is just always trying to make better content and make, um, you know, have a better hook to the beginning of the video to keep people there. And then just understanding what you're offering to your viewers as well. So hope that helps. I'm going to end this video right here because I'm on my way home. I don't have any more questions from Instagram. Thanks. That was a lot of fun. I got my errands run. I got to share with you guys and now we're done. So thanks for hanging in there. This is one of those YouTube things that I'm actually doing wrong. I'm asking you to subscribe at this point when actually from what I've been learning is that you should be asking at the beginning because a lot of people don't hold on to the end and the people that do hang on to the end are usually your faithful viewers anyway and they are already subscribed. But I'm gonna do it nonetheless. If you have not already subscribed, please subscribe and you will always uh, get the latest content that I put out there. So thanks a lot, have a great day, bye-bye.